Yeah guys, welcome back. Now today's video will be basically around um, the Great Stave. What is the Great Stave? What is it used for? How do we draw the Great Stave? Now, the Great Stave is a musical symbol that consists of the treble and the bass clef. The treble and the bass clef joined together by a brace. Now we might be asking ourselves, what is the stave used for? What is the great stave used for? Now the great stave is used for, first and foremost, the piano. You know that when, while playing the piano, you see pianists here and there, they play with both hands. Now there are some notes that will be placed on the bass stave, there are some notes that will be placed on the treble stave. Now for pianists, the bass stave consists of notes that will be played with the left hand. With the left hand, yeah, that's right. And then the um, treble stave consists of notes that will be played on the right hand. So you see them playing the piano and they're looking at the pieces. They're looking at what they are supposed to play with the right hand and what they are supposed to play with the left hand. So that's where um, the great stave comes into play for the pianists. Now you also have the orchestra. Now the orchestra consists of various musical instrumentalists coming together to play a particular musical piece. Now you can have um, an orchestra consisting of maybe the horns, the woodwind and the strings. What do I mean by that? The strings will include instruments like the violin, viola, cello and then the horns will include instruments like the trumpet, the French horn, the trombone, the tuba. The, the woodwind will include instruments like the flute, uh, the piccolo, the clarinet. So, so some of those instruments have particular um, staves they use. So if we are looking at the trumpets, the trumpets will be using the, the treble stave. If we are looking at the bassoon, which is a woodwind instrument, it will be using the bass stave. We are looking at the cello, which is a string instrument, to so use the bass stave. The violin will actually use the treble stave. So all together, they come to actually play a particular um, piece of music using the great stave. Now, number three use of the great stave is for vocals. Now, in contemporary music, we have um, people that sing the soprano, the alto, the tenor, and the bass. Now, you see that the soprano and the alto both use the treble stave because most of the time, they are usually females. And you know, the texture of the female voice is very light, and so they use the treble stave. Now the bass stave is being used by the tenor and the bass. The tenor and the bass most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time are being occupied by the guys. And so let's jump right into the video and see how we actually can draw the treble and the bass stave together, which we call the great stave. So we're going to be drawing the great stave. Yeah, I'm going to put my title, the great stave. Now remember that the great stave consists of both the treble and the bass stave. And I told you in our last class that both of them have different letterings for the lines and for the spaces. Yeah. Now for the lines of the great stave, we have E, G, B, D, F. So I'm going to put it for you on the screen and I'm going to give you acronyms. So you have every good boy deserves fish. Every good boy deserves fish. And for the spaces of the treble stave, you have fat Africans can eat. Fat Africans can eat. Yes. So you could use face face f a c e if you wish face now for the letters of the bass stave you have good boys deserve favor always good boys deserve favor always okay and then for the spaces of the bass stave you have all cows eat grass all cows eat grass look at what i'm drawing here now the treble 
and the bar stave remember i told you is joined together by a brace it's joined together by a brace the brace is that curly bracket that joins both the treble and bar stave together so the first one is always the treble stave while the second one is the bar stave the treble stave first and then the bar stave you're not going to draw it the other way around the treble stave first and then the bar stave now for the bar stave you have g b d f a good boys deserve favor always the spaces a c e g all cows eat grass the treble stave every good boy deserves fish every good boy deserves fish the spaces face f a c e remember f a c e or you have fat africans can eat fat africans can eat now look at look at it we have something here if you follow it it follows the normal alphabet g a b c d e f g a b now there is a middle c there is a middle c so if you follow it you can see that it just continues until you get to the treble stave and the next letter will be what g next letter will be a on the line do you understand so that's it yeah welcome to the fun fact section <laughs> Now, I wanted to ask, um, I wanted to know if you could differentiate between a happy chord and a piano. Now, if you can, pause this video and then make a comment in the comment section. Let me see. Okay, so what is the difference between a piano and a happy chord? Now, a happy chord has less range than a piano. Now, normally, a piano will have about seven and a half octaves like seven and a half octaves starting from a zero that's letter a a b c d e f g a b c d e f g a b c d e f g a up to c8 do you understand yeah while a happy chord will have uh just five octaves that's f1 to f5 do you understand so that's one difference secondly the strings at the back of a happy chord are always plucked like the guitar while the strings at the back of a piano are usually hammered and so you could actually control the velocity of the sound of, on a piano than that of a happy chord so no matter how soft you press the happy chord it will still make the normal sound so it doesn't have velocity so if you tap it small it's going to make a loud sound if you hit it it's going to make the same sound but well, for a piano if you tap it a bit to make a soft sound if you hit it to make a louder sound three the happy chord was actually very popular before the 1800s so after the 1800s for western music we started having more of the piano so those are just three facts about the happy chord and the piano Thank you very much. If you've gotten some value from this video, please, the link is just down there. It doesn't bite. Tap it, tap it, tap it. Yeah. Just tap it, subscribe, and then share to your friends. I'll see you in the next video. See ya.